much. So uh, uh, it's very much pleasure, of course, always to talk after uh, two years uh, being away from a workshop uh, in person. Um, so um, here talking uh, uh, in between uh, uh, two giants, uh, two John uh, Giovanni conjugated in the name. Um, and uh, I'm going to give a different perspective uh, than the one provided by, uh, by John before, and I guess uh, what Giovanni also will provide, uh, although connected uh, at the point of uh, uh, the evaluation of the Gurian's principle. So uh, what we talk about uh, is connected uh, to the fact that uh, we can probe uh, uh, non-commutative space-time as a class of universality for quantum gravity models, uh, uh, from the deformation of the statistics in underground experiment. And this is connected uh, to work that we've been doing uh, uh, with uh, uh, the VIP collaboration uh, uh, with the Catalina Gurciano and Christian Piscicchia and uh, uh, Andrea Dazzi um, uh, over the last years, uh, and also with the Dama collaboration with Andrea Dazzi and uh, Dama people. So, um, let me let me start, uh, and uh, uh, I will uh, uh, slightely remind uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, things about uh, uh, quantum gravity and uh, his testability. Um, and then I mean, as I will introduce the the arena of non-commutative space times uh, as a language uh, that we need um, in order to develop. Uh, uh, they say discussions uh, about the class universality that is uh, falsifiable uh, in underground experiments. Uh, and then I will focus on two many examples, in particular one, uh, over which we will discuss and show that there can be uh, disentangled constraints uh, on, uh, from the violation, from the uh, constraint that we have on the violation ex power exclusion principle uh, at the level of uh, uh, how much uh, uh, non commutative. Uh, uh, should be uh, our space time and the constraints uh, are very tight, as uh, I would say, uh, just showing what nature has uh, uh, to go to say about that. So, um, the falsifiability of, uh, let's say, quantum gravity is uh, uh, now uh, a question that uh, uh, continues since uh, many years. So when I started the studying, uh, uh, let's say that. Uh, uh, was pioneered by people like uh, John and Giovanni. Uh, we've been uh, 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 talking before, we talk uh, soon after. So, um, but of course, I mean, it's uh, in, in the meantime has become uh, a topic uh, uh, that is very much recurrent uh, in the literature. And uh, uh, the astrophysical and cosmological, uh, let's say, uh, implication uh, of this allow to test uh, uh, models that are top uh, uh, down. So this is, uh, uh, this is, I mean, very relevant, of course, because uh, in a certain sense, uh, uh, we were always thinking that uh, quantum gravity could be uh, untestable. So a phenomenology of quantum gravity could not be developed, uh, but I mean, it's uh, uh, the last uh, at least 30, 40 years have been showing uh, uh, something different. Um, not only, I mean, it's this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this first uh, consideration come from uh, always uh, uh, looking and inspecting a, a channel, which is uh, the electromagnetic gravitation channel. But uh, since 2015, uh, something uh, uh, happened uh, in, uh, uh, let's say, in the field of Muslim messenger astronomy, since uh, uh, the direct detection of gravitational radiation uh, has indeed uh, provided the possibility uh, also to look at uh, new physics, uh, but also to inspect, uh, let's say, uh, the fundamental aspects of uh, physics and also some uh, test, I mean, some, some doing some falsify some models of gravitational, uh, of, of uh, um, uh, quantum gravity. And uh, in particular, there have been claim uh, that uh, one can provide a uh, quantum gravitational microscope, but this is uh, in a certain sense uh, uh, different, uh, although related to what uh, John was uh, showing before, <coughs> about uh, dispersion relations. Uh, here, I mean, the claim uh, that have been do done uh, since 2018 uh, by Cardoso, Maselli, and Pani is that uh, one can arrive uh, even uh, to test uh, length which are uh, smaller than the Planck length. So it's really a gravitational microscope. And uh, there have been reaction to that uh, by Andrea is here, me, myself, and uh, Nico. Uh, but there is a discussion about that, of course, uh, 
But nonetheless, I mean, as we have to say that uh, uh, even though we cannot arrive to very tiny lens scale, uh, still this can provide, uh, uh, let's say, a magnifying lens uh, uh, next to uh, the Planck scale. But I will not talk about that. I will more focus today on the class of universality that pertain indeed what we call non-commutative space times, in which it falls some theory fall. And among this, I will show uh, in a while that there is also uh, string theory. And so, I mean, it's what I would do. I will restrict the focus uh, uh, into a background in which uh, uh, we consider the limit in which the gravitational effect are small, the quantum effect are small, but the ratio between the two is constant and uh, provide indeed the length uh, or a scale for the deformation of the symmetries. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, what uh, uh, this, uh, this seminar hinges on is a shift of paradigm, a shift of paradigm, even uh, from a phenomenological point of view. That is, we now have to look only uh, at the dispersion relation uh, for particle in their propagation in vago. Uh, but we have to consider also what the statistics and the limits that we have on the violation, the formation of the statistics may provide us about our knowledge of model of quantum gravity. And uh, uh, if we want to, uh, in a certain sense, axiomize this, we could rephrase in an algebraic way and say that there is a sector of the algebra that is connected to Hilbert space uh, for the one particle state. And then we have a co-algebra uh, sector that is connected uh, uh, basically to the statistics and to the Fox space. And uh, uh, the two are intimately connected, as I was uh, at least uh, from the point of view of the mathematical language. But then, I mean, of course, physics uh, has to choose which one of the mathematical language are the one that uh, we have uh, uh, to uh, use. Um, so um, uh, let me let me let me just remind something that I mean, it's, uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, listening many times. So we have the space statistics theorems that. Uh, uh, is connected uh, here, uh, uh, and I mean, as we know, is based on the Lorentz invariance. And uh, uh, whenever we have a deformation of the Lorentz invariance, we may happen what happens then to this spin statistic theorem that was first formulated uh, uh, by Pauli. So, uh, for instance, uh, when we consider non commutative space times, uh, something happened to the Lorentz uh, invariance. And this, what happened to Lorentz invariance is something that, for instance, uh, we have been observing even experimentally in the field of condensed matter. Uh, for instance, I mean, let's say if we look at uh, uh, onions uh, statistics, uh, uh, or if we look at uh, many other instances in which uh, there are indeed uh, deformation, not only at the level of the dispersion relation of the phonons, uh, but also the level of the statistic itself. Okay, and uh, uh, so uh, what is important here to, uh, to, to notice is that, I mean, it's uh, uh, this deformation now induced uh, and uh, let us consider effective models for quantum gravity that falls inside a new glass of universality, which is the one of non commutative space time that, that uh, violate the Pauli exclusion principle in a way which indeed uh, can be observable. So um, the Lorentz symmetry, of course, is uh, uh, one of the uh, topics uh, that are connected uh, then, I mean, uh, to these uh, topics of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the statistics uh, uh, theorem, uh, the Pauli theorem. So, um, and it is indeed, I mean, connected uh, to uh, several possibilities of a breakdown of the symmetries versus the deformation of the symmetries. So we can have a Lorentz invariance breakdown, and this maintains then a Lorentz invariant and the CPT violating renormalizable operators. And but this I mean, this may lead to uh, fine tuning, then introduction of uh, UV divergent uh, diagrams, uh, and then finally in the standard model, uh, and then finding. Finally, I mean, it's uh, affect even uh, unitarity. Uh, but then we can have a scenario which is uh, uh, more, uh, let's say, uh, fashionable in a certain sense uh, to consider dynamical spontaneous uh, uh, breakdown of the Lorentz symmetry. Uh, that can happen uh, even in physics, uh, uh, let's say, that is well known, <laughs> like UCD. Uh, but we can induce that uh, at high 
energy scale, and this may uh, may trigger the generation of neuron normalizable power exclusion principle violating uh, operators at that scale. But then, I mean, there is another perspective, uh, and the perspective is that, I mean, it's, you don't break down at all the symmetry. There is a, a new symmetry, and this new symmetry can be eventually analytically expanded uh, and provide uh, the former symmetry, the one that, I mean, we know as the Lorentz symmetry, but the new symmetry has uh, some new invariants, okay? As, as, as we can understand that as exactly as the way in which we introduce uh, the uh, symmetries that I mean, introduce a new invariants like uh, uh, the velocity of light, okay, uh, in the, the Lorentz symmetries. Um, and uh, uh, in this case, uh, the, the, the symmetry that I mean, it's, uh, we, we have, uh, we take into account uh, our symmetry that uh, uh, are not uh, violating the CPT symmetry, uh, but uh, um, let's say that I mean, it's, uh, can uh, now uh, in uh, uh, even uh, uh, involve uh, uh, let's say models uh, that uh, uh, preserve uh, uh, unitarity for uh, most part of uh, the models that can be considered. And there's a one model that is uh, very much considered in the literature is the model in which uh, uh, you uh, basically have uh, that unitarity is preserved when you deform or induce non-commutativity in space uh, uh, in uh, space time, and this non commutativity uh, must anyway not involve uh, uh, time and uh, space coordinate. So, has been studied uh, back in the time. So, as uh, I will show that, I mean, it's, uh, this case is selected uh, experimentally uh, with respect to the others uh, at the phenomenological level. And so, that, I mean, it's, we can say something uh, uh, even different uh, uh, from this point of view. So, there is something that uh, 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 in, 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 in the seminar of John before was uh, uh, very much, uh, um, very much, uh, uh, let's say, uh, specified uh, that is indeed uh, also how the violence principle uh, enter inside uh, this discussion. And uh, indeed, uh, we have here uh, uh, that we expect that this uh, principle violation uh, in uh, this non computer model uh, propagate. Uh, uh, toward all the possible, uh, let's say, forbidden channel. Uh, but uh, in this sense, uh, we have also another point that we have uh, to underline here, is that uh, there are several experiments that involve uh, probes uh, at atomic and uh, nuclear level. And uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can have probe that can be uh, uh, leptons or can be hadrons. Uh, and uh, nothing uh, uh, induced us to think that, I mean, it's uh, the way uh, the background field cable uh, to this particle must be the same. So we can have also uh, some uh, point in which, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, violation of uh, the equivalence principle can be introduced uh, in a natural way because uh, uh, we don't have to expect uh, that matter couple uh, to the ground field uh, in the same way. Why I talk about the ground field, that will be evident in a second. Um, so <clears throat> usually I mean, it's when I talk about that, uh, people uh, uh, fall asleep. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, you want to sacrifice yourself just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> These slides were just about to say that uh, um, if you act uh, with uh, with uh, some symmetry generator on the product of function, for instance, I mean, it's, uh, you can have uh, a representation of uh, uh, by algebra, and then with some axiom, uh, you can indeed uh, uh, compose the algebra with the by algebra and uh, create this uh, of uh, uh, algebra. So, um, so let me let me focus now on some concrete examples uh, uh, for these classes of universality. And the first one is uh, theta Poincaré, and this theta Poincaré can be uh, can be derived and achieved as a non-trivial of algebra. So now non-trivial means that the uh, the rule of uh, of multiplication of action of the symmetry generator, for instance, of the translation on the product of function is deformed. So it's no more the Leibniz rule. But actually, what happened here is something interesting that uh, since uh, this algebra is a twisted algebra, uh, the, uh, the algebraic sector of this of algebra is unchanged. But what changed is on only the uh, 
by algebra, so the co-algebraic sector. So basically, when you act on the product of function or representations. And then uh, this means that uh, you change uh, here the statistics, OK? Um, of course, I mean, it doesn't uh, follow immediately that you have to go through some considerations. So the algebra sector remain unchanged. And indeed, I mean, what you can find is that, I mean, it's the dispersion, energy momentum, dispersion relation in vacuo are remain unchanged. But the change of uh, the algebraic sector means uh, that there will be a byproduct on the uh, symmetry here. And this can be, for instance, uh, uh, inspected if we consider a representation in terms of an auxiliary space, which is you know, commutative. Uh, and uh, uh, in which uh, we introduce, uh, for instance, uh, a star product in order to map everything in terms of uh, coordinated or commutative. So then you will have a commutator as well, which is graduated with the star product, uh, and you can introduce in this way the non commutativity. And you can expand your Fourier, uh, Fourier series, and the product of the non commutativity will be now evident only when you consider the product of uh, two field. Okay, so these are for classical field in this case. And you can see that indeed this uh, uh, deformation on, uh, uh, which is induced by the star product, uh, where the star product follow from the twist, okay, which is what the form, the algebra, is in the statistics, uh, percolate into the statistics. And uh, how can we see that then, I mean, this percolation, the statistics, this statistics amount uh, to change uh, of, for instance, uh, the Pauli principle. Well, I mean, it's, uh, this can be uh, seen because, uh, uh, because indeed uh, what happened uh, is that uh, um, if you consider, for instance, uh, some wave packet uh, and I mean, it's uh, picked around some value of uh, momentum, uh, um, you can consider, for instance, uh, product of two of these, uh, which are uh, Pauli violating. And uh, uh, you can consider now I mean, normalization, uh, which is uh, uh, now a normalization of this state, uh, which is polyvariating, uh, is not vanishing. Uh, it's vanishing only for a zero measure, zero measure set. Uh, and you can consider also transition amplitude in between uh, this state and state that are allowed by the Pauli exclusion principle. So now you can consider these states. That are, I mean, you can consider how these states also evolve under a dynamics, which is dictated now by uh, theories that are symmetric under this uh, theta Poincaré uh, symmetries. So the situation of kappa Poincaré uh, is a little bit different. Uh, and uh, is different in the sense that uh, in that case, uh, you have the deformation is both at the level of the algebra and the algebra. So you have, of course, a possibility to do some uh, uh, phenomenology in terms of energy momentum dispersion relation. But uh, you have uh, the, the statistics uh, is going to be uh, changed in this case, although there is an ambiguity in the literature because uh, following a sympathetic geometric approach, the Cherenkovich Witten uh, with Miguel Arzano, we demonstrated uh, that uh, the statistics is deformed while following another approach uh, with the five differential calculus, uh, we follow that. I mean, this is not uh, uh, accomplished. And of course, this ambiguity, ambiguity is something that can be removed. Uh, only once we have experimental guidance, okay? So having data on this uh, allow us uh, either to have an experimental guidance or to rule out uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, models. So uh, why, uh, what nature has to say about that? Uh, well, I mean, it's of course uh, a lot. Uh, something that I mean, it's when I was introducing these two examples, uh, um, I didn't say it, uh, but I may mean, want to say it now, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is a big difference in between uh, the Kappa Poincaré and the Theta Poincaré scenario in the sense that, uh, in one case, uh, the deformation uh, are assumed to be, let's say, suppressed uh, for the Kappa Poincaré case in the algebraic rules uh, uh, by uh, uh, the inverse of a scale, which is a scale that regulates the ultraviolet, let's say, uh, physics, Okay, which uh, we may assume to be promotional to the uh, Planck uh, scale for a theoretical reason for the Planck energy. And, uh, and so uh, the, uh, the deformation to the spin statistic theorem are going to be suppressed in that scale. They're going to be suppressed in this scale. So uh, they have, they fall a linear suppression. 
while uh, the case of theta Poincare is different in the sense that we assume, we expect that the deformation there will gonna have a suppression in the, the square of uh, uh, scale for the ultraviolet effect. That could be, for instance, uh, scale of energy uh, for uh, string theory. So it can be connected also to the Planck scale or could be eventually a bit, uh, uh, let's say, lower in energy or bigger in uh, uh, scale of uh, distance. And then, um, of course, I mean, as, as you can imagine, um, it's uh, uh, somehow uh, more difficult to falsify the theory that has uh, the quadratic uh, power of the scale with respect to the one which is linear. Uh, but as we will see, in a certain sense, uh, the statistics is helping us to falsify uh, exactly, I mean, it's even the quadratic one, even the data one case that is connected to uh, indeed also uh, the uh, string theory. So the parameterization uh, that we can uh, use is indeed a parameterization in which uh, the uh, statistics is deformed uh, uh, accounting for a dependence on uh, the energy now. And uh, uh, this uh, energy is indeed, uh, 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 let's say, energy dependent uh, is indeed uh, uh, put in a function, uh, which we, we assume, of course, in the standard case to be one. So let's say that uh, we expect that this eta function must be something closer to one, because uh, uh, the changing this eta function uh, means to change uh, the statistics, uh, means uh, basically to touch uh, the power exclusion principle. Uh, so it means uh, basically to uh, uh, challenge uh, the stability of matter. So it's something that, I mean, of course, uh, we expect uh, to be eventually, if it exists, extremely small. But uh, what we know is that it must be extremely, extremely small from the experiment, because uh, we have that uh, our constraints uh, are the tightest one that can be indeed uh, uh, disentangled. And uh, these are related uh, through this uh, uh, parameterization uh, to the probability of transition uh, uh, in states that are now violating the value exclusion principle. So um, the first analysis uh, that we did uh, back in the days with Andrea and the people of Dama was uh, uh, accounting for uh, uh, an expansion uh, uh, which is analytic uh, in uh, the energy and uh, the energy scale where the energy is the deeper energy of the transition uh, atomic or nuclear transition that is uh, taken into account. Um, so, um, Let's say that I mean, it's the two type of experiments uh, that uh, uh, we can uh, consider in order to look for uh, exclusion uh, uh, violations. And uh, uh, in particular, uh, we can have a uh, uh, search uh, for uh, atomic or nuclear, let's say, uh, uh, transition in a non polyan state or a search for front radiation uh, that is accompanying uh, uh, these non polyan transitions for electron or for uh, uh, nucleons. So, um, the uh, collaboration for Xeno. So, if we look at this transition altogether, putting all together the atomic and the nuclear one, so the for uh, Xeno collaboration have been providing uh, uh, constraints uh, that uh, are, especially in the nuclear channel, uh, for considering, for instance, transitions uh, for the carbon atom to polyvolating uh, uh, symmetry state for a bomb or for the carbon itself. Uh, then the exciting with the emission of uh, nucleons. So we, in this case, uh, in this case, uh, uh, the, uh, the upper limit that we had uh, on the delta parameter, delta square parameter, uh, has been uh, the uh, tightest one, and uh, uh, this uh, amount then uh, in our uh, um, uh, in the phenomenological expansion of the delta square parameter in terms of uh, the energy, in probing uh, scale uh, which are basically close already to the uh, Planck energy or even uh, uh, go beyond uh, the Planck energy. Uh, but the point, as I was saying, is that uh, we want to show and want to see what happens even when, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, atomic, uh, let's say, probes are taken into account and the setup is different uh, and uh, not only nuclear emission uh, or photon emission is uh, taken into account. So um, just uh, something to say is that, of course, uh, in, in that case, Vorexino was looking at, uh, let's say, uh, energy for the emission, which is around uh, to, uh, to MEV, uh, while, uh, of course, uh, in other experiment, uh, the typical energy changes in around 70, 80 keV. TV. Um, here, uh, you can see uh, the underground experiments that are combined and uh, in which I minutes mean, uh, they're all put together. Um, and these are basically the uh, 
uh, the, 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 the energy scales that can be probed for uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the value of the, the, the energy scale that can be probed uh, for the different, let's say, parameterization that basically amounts to possible different uh, uh, theoretical models that are taken into account. Uh, but I mean, it's now, I mean, I want to uh, talk about uh, these uh, new results uh, from uh, the VIP site uh, that for the closed system uh, uh, allow to uh, talk about you non-commutative know, quantum uh, gravity models, uh, so a class universality of uh, non-commutativity uh, that uh, is uh, evading uh, the uh, constraints from uh, the Messier-Greenberg uh, rule about uh, uh, the symmetry uh, state. So I mean, it's, uh, in this case, I mean, it's, uh, we can evade this and we can consider also transition within two different symmetry state. And uh, employing uh, static uh, copper um, led target uh, for searching for anomalous cap alpha and to be the I mean, uh, transitions uh, with energies around the 70 80 kV, uh, we uh, could uh, uh, arrive uh, to uh, results that have been uh, just yesterday published, by the way, on PRL. So uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, page, uh, first page of this. Uh, uh, publication uh, for which uh, uh, all uh, the with collaboration have been involved, of course, with the, the data and uh, the analysis uh, and done uh, by Christian and uh, the discussion uh, between uh, me, Andrea, and uh, Catalina uh, and Christian, of course. Uh, um, so, uh, so in in this case, in this scenario, which is the, the one of the closed system in, in which we can evade the Messiah Greenberg, uh, let's say, uh, constraints uh, on uh, say symmetry. Uh, um, let's say uh, uh, selection rule. Um, then uh, we can uh, we can look at transition of two type. We look at transition of two type, and then I mean it's we avoid uh, eventually to do a different kind of analysis in which delta square has been expanded. We consider a transition rate and the deformation of this transition rate uh, multiplied by this uh, delta square parameter that now has a dependence on the energy that change. Of course, uh, uh, by with the uh, uh, the glass of universality that is taken into account, we focus on theta one carré, and we have two possibilities. The one in which uh, we have electric components uh, that come from the theta uh, tensor, uh, which is the tensor for the uh, deformation of, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the commutativity and basically the commutator for uh, space uh, time coordinates and the magnetic components. So where does this uh, theta components of this tensor come from? So these are the vacuum expectation value of the background B field in uh, string theory. So this is uh, connected to analysis that have been done back in the days by people like uh, Cyberg and Witten. So it's something that has been very much discussed. So if we want stabilization, if you want to have, uh, I mean, it's a, a scenario which is the most likely eventually in order to even to make contact with the standard model of particle physics, we have to consider this background, this expectation value, value expectation value of the background field B um, and then uh, this uh, basically lead to uh, a deformation of the symmetry because uh, you have that the coordinate of the dark space uh, start being uh, uh, fulfilling a uh, commutativity, which is a uh, non commutativity, which is uh, proportional to this uh, theta tensor, to this background field. And then uh, what happened, which, which is basically a, a kind of Landau like non commutativity. And then what happened is that this induces uh, uh, the formation of, uh, 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 of the statistics, okay? So um, these two cases, though, I mean, it's are related to the case in which uh, we consider the electric components to be non-vanishing. And if the electric components are non-vanishing, as I was saying uh, before, I was showing uh, some results from the past, there are problems with unitarity, okay? Uh, nonetheless, I mean, we want to consider every kind of possibility. There are also I minutes mean, the one in which uh, the transition rate, uh, second possibility that can, we can consider from uh, in the class universality of uh, theta one carré, in which there are only magnetic components uh, that uh, are uh, uh, relevant. And this case, of course, uh, uh, is consistent with uh, assuming that the electric components of the data tensor are zero, and then the unitarity, we know for sure that is preserved. 
And uh, uh, let's say we can consider in this case uh, the, uh, the uh, probability, the delta square to be proportional uh, to the difference of the energy levels of final and initial, uh, let's say, electrons that are involved in the uh, transitions. And for this case, we can find that uh, in the non-vanishing electric components case, uh, we can exclude the one carry up to 2.6 to 10 to the 2 Planck scale. Uh, while in the vanishing electric components, uh, we have that the one carry is excluded uh, from 6.9 10 to the minus 2 Planck scales. So these are, of course, the results that are the strongest one in uh, the atomic uh, sectors and uh, they relate then to two possibilities, uh, which are physically distinguished, of course, and can be related uh, to uh, two cases uh, that are considered uh, as a very important and relevant in the literature, especially in the literature of string theory. So um, I was just to mention here that, I mean, it's, uh, there, are, there are many experiments that can be uh, eventually taken into account. Uh, as I was saying, uh, not all the experiments uh, deal with the same probes. Uh, uh, Juno is more, uh, uh, let's say, on the side of the experiments like Borexino. Uh, as I mean, it's uh, what we have there is a Liebig scintillator, but uh, the Liebig scintillator that Juno will have uh, is, uh, let's say, uh, at least around 200, uh, two, two order of magnitude uh, uh, higher than uh, the one uh, of Borexino. Uh, that 300 ton Juno will be uh, 20 ton. So um, we expect uh, that on a different channel, uh, something even more interesting eventually could be said by Juno, but of course, I mean, Juno has uh, eventually had a problem with respect to, uh, with respect to all problem, or let's say uh, characteristics, uh, features with respect to uh, Borexina. Borexina is indeed in a very radio war environment uh, set up in the Gran Sasso laboratory, while Juno, as we know, uh, is intended to study uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, flavor uh, changes, uh, oscillations uh, for neutrinos, so it's uh, placed uh, close to a, rea a nuclear reactor. So, of course, I mean, this change the features, uh, and we will have to see uh, what will be uh, the uh, output of the analysis in that case. But uh, let's say that uh, the best case scenario is that uh, this could inch eventually toward the, uh, even uh, cubic, uh, let's say, uh, cubic uh, uh, order if we, if we do a parameter expansion of the delta square parameter, of the delta square parameter, the phenomenological parameter. So we can even probe uh, cubic, uh, let's say, modification in uh, the blank length. Uh, but anyway, so uh, just I me mean, to add a little bit more of uh, mathematical structure to uh, the, uh, the, the discussion, I may even say that uh, um, here we have been discussing uh, how important can be uh, the uh, statistics uh, in, uh, this, uh, uh, in this discussion. Um, so the statistics uh, can be understood and related uh, to, let's say, uh, symmetry uh, and the, the algebraic sector. So looking at the, the vacuum and the dispersion energy momentum dispersion relation in Vago um, is uh, um, looking at the algebraic sector with respect uh, to the co-algebraic sector, so the statistics of the off, uh, or the, um, sorry, um, the Fox space, uh, when we look uh, indeed, I mean, it's uh, possible leaf constraints and possible violation of the exclusion principle. Uh, there is another point, uh, uh, eventually we may even constrain the theory that has uh, uh, a deformation of uh, the uncertainty principle. Why? Because I mean, uncertainty principle is related to the sympathetic structure, and the sympathetic structure is related to the symmetry and is related uh, to the, uh, let's say, uh, extended uh, quadrilateral structure of the symmetry. So uh, usually, mathematically, when you change something, uh, let's say any change percolates in the other sector. These are three sectors that are all interconnected mathematically. Of course, only physics is going to tell us uh, which sector uh, will have to be uh, modified. But of course, uh, it's unlikely to think that uh, you, only, you only change one sector and you don't change the other sector. If something is changed, most probably the, I mean, the, the, the changes uh, percolate in every sector and then I mean, percolate also in the uh, 
<clears throat> the uncertainty principle uh, within uh, the symplectic uh, framework is easy to see that. Then, of course, the data is going to give us uh, uh, the guidance about this. So just concluding, uh, then uh, uh, this is a path, okay? A path that uh, um, is, providing, uh, is providing guidance. Uh, why I say providing guidance? Because, for instance, uh, we know that there is a problem of ambiguity <clears throat> when we consider Capo Vancare. So when we consider Capo Vancare, we know that uh, there are uh, uh, statistics that for sure are not accepted, not accepted in a bad way uh, by the data. So, I mean, it's then, uh, although, of course, I've been working on the statistics that is the form and uh, personally, Capo uh, Vancare, I'm happy that uh, from the data, uh, we have to exclude that, okay? So there's more, more time to work on something uh, different than. Um, so this is the guidance that is provided. At the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, a scenario which is a scenario which is particularly uh, popular and uh, particularly relevant, like I mean, it's the one uh, connected to the data Boncare, is started being excluded uh, with, uh, let's say, value of uh, uh, the theta parameter constraint on the theta tensor, uh, which start being relevant because are very much uh, uh, now. Uh, let's say big in scale or large, let's say in uh, energy scale, we respect uh, to the Planck energy or to the Planck scale. So uh, this, of course, uh, uh, we can always say, yes, you can uh, modify your parameter taking it smaller and smaller and smaller, but then there is a problem of what naturally the theory is going to tell you. Uh, or you may even say that, uh, okay, well, I don't need to take the expectation value of the B field, uh, but then, uh, then uh, you have to show that you can have anyway uh, the link with the standard model of particle physics. So um, the other point is that I wanted to show is that I mean standard God experiment of course uh, provide this uh, window of falsifiability of this class of universality of model in which fall many models. So I was talking about in theory, but uh, <coughs> also other models. I mean other theory of quantum gravity. Uh, and may fall inside this classes on universality. Uh, uh, I was uh, indeed uh, working on uh, stuff to connect with the gap of Poincaré, <coughs> also uh, the quantum gravity. So um, the, 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 the important is indeed uh, that uh, we know how to connect this phenomenological uh, parameterization with uh, uh, theories, uh, so we can uh, learn something about the theories. Uh, uh, and uh, as I was saying, I mean, it's, we, uh, we, we have to take into account the fact that uh, uh, there can be, as was uh, shown before by uh, John, uh, and I guess I mean, other people will talk about that, uh, and also Giorgio, uh, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, uh, the equivalence principle is uh, uh, very relevant also in this discussion because uh, the way this uh, uh, feels background field coupled uh, to, uh, uh, to leptons and hadrons uh, uh, can be different. And then, I mean, it's, we have to take uh, each experiment, each peculiarity of the experiment, the probe that are in the experiment, uh, as uh, uh, distinguish uh, among them because they can, uh, they are saying something different uh, among the possible way, I mean, the theory can be instantiated. So there are different realizations of the theory. Each experiment, uh, as limits that must be, we have to take into account different classes. Uh, and these limits have been provided recently by VIP uh, are the strongest one uh, in the atomic sector. Uh, and these allow already to get uh, these results, which are uh, incredibly constraining uh, uh, for the Theta Poincare class of uh, universality. So uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, your Thank you very much, Antonino. So first of all, I want to ask if there are questions from the audience, please. Yeah, because otherwise the people online do not hear you. Just sort of, maybe it's me being sort of naive, but in the introduction, you mentioned that the relevant limit where there's no commutative geometry comes in is H goes to zero and G goes to zero, right? Uh -huh. Now, I mean, H is one. 
when you say that h goes to zero, it means that the action kind of goes to be big with respect to h. So it's a semi-classical state and the number of quantum occupied, usually it means that the occupied, quantum occupancy number goes to infinity. That's what it means, h equals zero. It's classic, classical field. G goes to zero means you don't have gravitational interaction. It doesn't really have to do with sort of occupancy of states. It's a deformation of the Hilbert space. And um, non-commutativity usually means that the number of available states decreases. The system becomes more quantum. I'm just wondering, I mean, is there sort of a model in which it's natural that this, this arises because it's not clear to me that these limits are not like in conflict with each other. You see what I mean? Uh, okay, so uh, these limits uh, are just uh, shown, uh, uh, I think I mean, it's, uh, um, uh, you have not to give too much meaning to this limit in the sense that um, they're just shown to say that even though the uh, gravitational effect will be negligible in the sense that uh, you're not close to do uh, black hole uh, uh, <laughs> in a strong uh, uh, gravity regime, uh, or uh, that I means uh, you're not uh, experiencing, uh, uh, let's say, uh, quantum effects due to a large uh, uh, superposition number of samples, for instance. Uh, even though in this uh, in this case uh, you may have uh, that uh, uh, there are effects. Uh, of uh, let's say the deformation of a structure which are affected I mean, are really due to the fact that it means uh, uh, at tiny scale uh, you have to reconsider the, topo the topology due to the forminess or the fuzziness of the space so due to the stochasticity or due to the, ca the chaoticity that you can have so um <clears throat> so this means that uh, even though there are not sources of curvature that are large okay and even though you're not eventually looking at quantum effects that are sizable, uh, you will see eventually in this scheme, eh, I'm not saying this is not the only scheme that you can consider, you will see in this scheme that there is a deformation of the symmetry. So then, uh, uh, then of course, I mean, it's, uh, you, you can say that uh, uh, this is one of the possible uh, scheme that you can look at, and I, I totally agree with you. Indeed, I say this is a class of universality. Then there are others. Is one of the possible. Is is a framework, and there are but there are many theories that already follow in this framework. Other questions from the audience in here? I, yeah. Well, I have one myself, but before, let me ask if people online, they if there is anyone who has questions, just start. Asking because I don't see you. Catalina, this is Giovanni. Ciao, I Giovanni. Ask a question. Ciao. Please. Anthony. Hi, Please. Giovanni. Ciao. Very nice talk. I I want to look at it from the cup. As you as you might imagine, I'm, I'm more mm -hmm. interested in the cup of Poincaré implications. And, and there are two interesting directions where I would like to probe you on. Uh, this for the Kappa Poincaré part of the analysis, a key role is played by the non-primitive co-product, I would say, for your studies. Yeah. And, and assuming that this non-primitive co-product basically uh, is a, an imprint of how momenta are composed in yeah. this framework. Yeah, yeah. So there so are two there are two sides that I would like to probe on. On one side, this makes, as you know, this issue of the total momentum in Capo Poincaré is a, a, a resilient and old challenge. Yes, 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 yes. Interpretation. Yes. So on the one hand, this makes even more important your attempts to make yeah, connection yeah. to so, data because you could provide guidance to what we should do. Yes, yes. But on the other hand, isn't it possible that if one day because these compositional momenta that are inspired by the co-product typically are troublesome for macroscopic system. This soccerball problem yeah, exactly. that we used problem, to talk yeah. about. So maybe there is a connection. So maybe what we yeah, are yeah, learning no. is that we need to find as I was uh, as I was mentioning uh, before, thank you for this question, Johnny. So as I was mentioning before, uh, um 
in the case of uh, Capo Poincaré, um, I didn't talk about uh, uh, exclusion of the model. I talk about uh, removing ambiguity in the sense uh, that uh, we know, as you were saying, that there is a primitive uh, part which concern about uh, uh, the, the formation of the co-product. Uh, but uh, as we know, uh, the differential calculus is relevant there in uh, writing, uh, let's say, the, uh, uh, for instance, the Leibniz rule or not. And, and we know that indeed, uh, in the 5D case, uh, the, 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 the statistics turn out to be, uh, to be standard. And there are not then the sizable effect uh, that uh, arise at the level of uh, uh, the deformation or violation of the value exclusion principle. So what the data are saying that whatever kind of uh, uh, statistics, uh, uh, sorry, whatever kind of model uh, uh, we can uh, we can have uh, uh, in the case of the multi particle state uh, for Kappa Poincaré must be something that doesn't change, of course, uh, doesn't touch uh, in any way, at least, I mean, up to the sensitivity that we have. Uh, uh, which on the kappa case are very, very high, yeah? because I mean, the kappa case uh, on, on theta Poincaré, we arrive to, uh, to uh, basically the Planck scale, uh, even more in the case of, uh, of, of kappa, we will have uh, 10, to the, 10 to the 20. So, so it will be something uh, gigantic. I mean, it's, so, I mean it's, it's extremely very well constrained. So we know that for kappa Poincaré, we cannot touch absolutely the value exclusion principle at energy scale that are much, 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 much higher even than the Planck scale. Um, then of course, uh, uh, and this is already a big information, big piece of information. So already for instance, what I was working with, uh, with uh, Michele uh, is not possible. It's not possible. I mean, it's excluded experimentally. Um, then of course, we can ask ourselves, if, if, as you are saying, if it is possible to have uh, this model, like the 5D differential calculus, uh, that does not change the, uh, the, um, the power exclusion principle, but uh, at the end of the day, fulfills some other constraint at the macroscopic level. So, for instance, solve the soccer ball problem or, or does not uh, uh, fall into the, uh, let's say, class of uh, models that have the soccer ball problem. So, let's say that uh, that is a necessary condition is that. Uh, does not, should not have any kind of violation of the value exclusion principle at any scale, because I mean, it's really the scale is very, very high energy scale. And then all the other constraints that you have been mentioning that of course do not follow from this that I was showing before about the underground laboratories. What you're, for, what you're mentioning is another extra constraint that I would say is a sanity check. Uh, sanity check from the theoretical point of view, but also experimentally because uh, of course, uh, we see uh, uh, collective behavior. Uh, thank you.